Allah is just. So we understand that in a context, we are not capable, we cannot make somebody become Muslim. We can only convey the message to them. So that's what we do. We keep on doing it. That is, as I said, a never-ending process, ending with our death. In this life, it's never ending. In one you die, when you die, that's when it ends. But as long as you're living and there are people around you, it is your job to convey the message, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim. We convey the message in action, in words, pamphlets, whatever. We convey that message. Very important question, but may I ask in what circumstances may be you to be Okay, before we go to that, let us uh, see if there are any other general questions directly related to the talk. Mm -hmm. How do they explain the corruption from the burial of How do they explain the resurrection? Well, they explain that Jesus died in the body, but did not die in the spirit. God resurrected that body. See, because how did they explain that Jesus was a man and he was God at the same time? You know, they say, well, some say, well, he's God, he was a man on the outside, but he was filled with God on the inside. So the body, that physical body, died, but God didn't die. Yeah. Uh, you didn't deal uh, uh, too much with the Jews. Uh, they, they don't really say they have any remarkable. But way, uh, in terms of the Jews, what has happened is that they have made God their own personal God. You know, that's. Just being a Jew is a guaranteed ticket to paradise. Right? And they have also given God the attributes of men. They have made God less than them in their writings, in the Talmud. You know, God seeks the permission of the rabbis before he makes certain decisions for men. In the Old Testament, God is mentioned as repenting for what he did to the Jews. So these are all, you know, things which indicate their view of God as being really like less than man in a sense. You know, they have, they have brought God down to the level of human beings. But essentially, the message that they have in terms of the Torah, most of it, or much of it, is Islamic. And one would then ask, why is it that for every hundred people who accept Islam, Maybe 99.9% .9 are Christians and only 0.1% would be Jews. Why? If they are so close. Because they have turned the religion into nationalism. Yes, yes. It's a, it, it is, it is, being Jew is not just a religion, it is a race. So it's been so interwoven that, so they're caught up in a situation that they're like Abu Talib. Abu Talib who knew the truth, when the truth was presented to him on his deathbed and the Prophet ﷺ called on him to give it up and accept Allah openly which he had done inside, but he wouldn't say it openly. He preferred to remain based on his nationalism, his pride in his tribe, the religion of the forefathers, not wanting to shame the tribe. You see? So similarly the Jews, their nationalism, tribalism, so strong for a Jew to convert to Islam. Whoa! This is, you know, a major upheaval. A 
I mean, that person, you know, uh, his life is under threat. It's a major step. Like Christians in Egypt, for example. You know, the Copts, Coptic Christians of Egypt. Now you wonder. You read the Bible, those who know Arabic, you see. You read the Bible in Arabic, and you read the Quran in Arabic. The difference is like night and day. The Quran is just, you know, rhyme and rhythm and beauty just, you know, flowing. The Bible is like reading the newspaper. Incomparable. Why are there Christian Arabs? Because for them, Christianity becomes nationality. But I was talking to one Egyptian cop, you know. I started to talk to him a little bit, you know, when he found out uh, I was Canadian and became Muslim. I became Muslim. How? how why? 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 So I said, well, you know, because I started to explain to him about, you know, seeking the truth. And so he said, man, I was born a Christian and I will die a Christian. <laughs> that's it. So that, you know, that's my family, you know, I, I could never give it up. Because in his mind, it is, it is you know, that, that commitment is, is racial now. Nationalistic. So a person has to go beyond that to be able to accept the truth. Question from the sisters. After one performs Fajr prayer, can one go back to sleep? Of course. <laughs> 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 Somebody gets to get an idea that we're not allowed to go back to sleep after Fajr, you know. <laughs> huh? That's a really strange question. Uh, you know, maybe it's better the person who asks this question, they should really explain where they got the idea that it's not allowed to go back to sleep from. Huh? Sister? She left? Uh, well, please, uh, try and find out. <laughs> the other one, regarding dua, after salah. Should one make dua after salah? Or after salah, you recite the Quran and then make dua? Well, after salah, there is no um, special recommendation of reciting Quran. You know, Prophet Sallallahu had said, you know, after salah, he said, Ud'u ma at this point, you call and ask Allah for whatever you wish, you know, from yourself. This is why also it is not really acceptable Islamically that after Salah, you know, in some places the Imam will turn and he starts reciting these different du'as in Arabic and everybody's Ameen, 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 Ameen. This is not from the Sunnah at all. Because then where is your own personal prayer? No personal prayer here. He's reciting Arabic, you don't understand a word he's saying. He could be cursing you and you're saying, Ameen, Ameen. <laughs> you know? This is not the, the prayer. Huh? After the prayer, you make prayer for yourself. You ask Allah personally, in your own language. Allah understands our language. Arabic is not holy. And the hadith which says that the language of the people of paradise is, is Arabic is not authentic. Uh, another question? Question from the sisters? Okay. Just uh, before we close then, I'll just briefly uh, mention why I decided to become Muslim, to choose Islam. Just to say that um, though I was born a Christian, in a Christian family I should say, raised as a Christian, uh, when I was in college and university, I decided to give up Christianity and become a communist because of the fact that uh, at the time in America there were different movements which were calling for change in the society, uh, 